Hi, and welcome to Coding with Jesse. I'm Jesse Skinner, and I'm working on a React.js demo right now. And next thing I want to do is add some validation to the props. So I'm here on the React page documentation, and they have quite a few different prop types that we can use. So what I'm going to do is go to my various components and add prop types to make sure that the props are all there. So let's start with uh, radio option. So you can see I'm using two props, children and value. So I'm going to add prop types here and it's an object and inside there I'm going to have value and I'm going to have children. So what do I need for value? Well I want value to be required. There should be a value here and I'm going to say it can be pretty much anything, a string basically. So uh, let's call it a string and so I'm going to use the react.proptypes.string and that's sort of how you, that is how you require it. So I say value and I want it to be a string. And now children, I want it to be a, an element. So I'm going to copy element. It can be anything though. Um, actually, node. It says anything that can be rendered. So that's appropriate for children as well. So let's just use that. I'm going to say value is required. And here's how you do that. And then children can just be anything. So I should be able to refresh my demo and it should just work fine. Uh, let's make sure it's working by trying to break it. So if I go to my group and let's say I leave value off, let's say I forget value. If I refresh, it's still working, but I bet if I go into my console, yeah, so it's saying warning, required prop value is not specified in radio option. That's great. So I get a warning there, and if I put that back or refresh, the warning's gone. So that's a way to help sort of document your code. Um, warnings are going to show up if people do something wrong, and then it helps your components be more reusable because, you know, that way people know what to expect and what they're missing. So I'm going to add a new property type to my radio option, and that is name. So right now I have refer hard coded in here for my question type, but I'm going to make that into a property. So let's say this props.name and I'm going to say name needs to be a string and it's required just like value. So I haven't started using name yet and so I'm going to pass it in to my option group. Now where do I get the name from? Well the option group itself should the name should be the same across the whole option group. So it's going to pull in the name too. Uh, now, you'd think I'd want to do this.props.name, but the problem is here, this is not going to refer to the component because we're inside this other function. So what I'm going to do is make a variable here inside the render function and use a, a JavaScript closure. So that's how it's going to access the properties. So then my radio option group itself is going to have prop types. It's going to, the only prop type it's going to have is the name. And it's going to be, I'll just copy paste it from radio option because it's the same. I want it to be a string and I want it to be required. You have to pass in a name. All right, so if I go up to, well, let's refresh the page first and see where the warnings show up. All right, so I got a warning that the property name was not specified in radio option group. Check the render method of demo. So it's telling me exactly where I need to go to fix this. So if I go into demo, I see my radio option group. I have other and options, but now I need to have name as well. So this is where I can put name, refer, and that's going to be used for my input name. So that way I can have more than one 
radio option group and I can give the form elements different names and it's gonna use that to submit to the server. Alright, so I should also define other and options. So options is definitely required. Uh, other is optional and it's a boolean. So let's put those in. So other is a react prop types dot bool. I believe it's just the word bool. Let's go to the documentation. Yep, yeah, bool. And it's optional, so I'm not going to put the is required part. And then we also have uh, this props options. That should be a an array, and it is required. All right, so that should take care of that. Now my radio option group is well documented, or better documented. And if I if anyone tries to use those incorrectly, it's going to fail. Uh, what else can I do? So, oh, one thing, the last thing I need to do is deal with my radio other option. So if I go into that, that's my, the last option, other. It's still using name refer, so I need to have it uh, use the props. So I'm going to say this props name. Here, let me split this up so it's readable. And... So I'm going to add prop types to this as well, saying that name is required. Prop types, name, and I'm going to say react.proptypes.string, uh, and it is required. Now, I'm not setting it yet, so that's something I need to do here. So I'll put name equals name because now I'm in my radio option group and I have that name variable closure. So if everything works, I should be able to refresh. It should be no warnings, or maybe I missed something. Yeah, there's no warnings. Uh, no warnings about prop types anyway. And I should be able to click through. Everything looks good. If I I'm gonna inspect element just to make sure that now the name is refer. So if I go back, let's say, to my demo, and call it something else, um, ABC, whatever. If I go back, refresh, I can see that the radio button is now called ABC. So there you have it. I've basically just made my radio option group much more re reusable. And it's got probably everything you need to reuse it. So there you have it. I've created a reusable React component. I can use this throughout this website. I can even use it on other websites. And uh, it's uh, that's the benefit of using React, that you can create components for common things you're doing and, and reuse them. All right, I hope you enjoyed it. In the next episode, I'm going to get this ready for production. So I'm going to convert all my JSX files into regular JavaScript files. I hope you stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Thank you.